adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, pursuant to Public Laws 1975, Chapter 231. This agenda is complete to the extent known and was sent to the Trent Times and the Trent County newspapers. Posted on the first floor board board in the City Hall and filed in the City Clerk's Office. Formal action will be taken. Roll call.
19-25, which is an ordinance establishing the code of ethics for officials, professionals, and employees for the city of Kenton. I declare open a public hearing for this ordinance. If anyone wishes to speak on this subject, please state your name and address. Seeing none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Second. Ms. Caldwell-Bolson? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Michel? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Michel? Yes. Public hearing for ordinance number 19-25 is closed. Is there a motion to adopt ordinance 19-25? So moved. Second. Are you ready for the vote? Yes, we are. Ms. Caldwell-Bolson? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Michel? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. McBride? Yes. Ordinance number 19-25 has been properly adopted. Next to your consideration is ordinance number 19-27, which is an ordinance authorizing the sale of property, sale of property known as the Cook School property to KCG Development, authorizing the execution of the purchase and sale agreement in connection with the family. I declare open a public hearing on this ordinance. If anyone wishes to speak to this matter, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record.
And um, from the beginning, that's what the tunnel was for, to divert traffic from the city to 29, 195, 195, to keep the large trucks off the city. Right before the opening of that tunnel, the ordinance was changed. Right? So I don't know who did the state DOT, the city, where no trucks were allowed in the tunnel, right before the opening. So that diverted all that traffic through South Trenton, where people are waking up to the loud trucks of the garbage trucks, the worst drivers in the world, the garbage haulers, the dump trucks, the track and trail is all running through South Trenton to get to Route 1 to get to the landfill. It's destroying people's homes, it's causing foundation problems, it's causing road problems. And if you stand there and watch how these drivers make that left hand turn to go down to Cash Street, you'll see why it's evident that this revolution gets passed to get those trucks out of the city and let them stay on the outer banks of the riverbank and go through that tunnel. There are bridges on 29 that are clear. They're 14 foot bridges. So uh, any tractor trailer can go under the bridges on 29. The tunnel is at least 16 feet, so there's no problem with the, with the trucks going through the tunnel. The only thing that's, the problem is that they changed the ordinance so that the trucks are banned from there. So I am in support of this resolution to try to get DOT to change that resolution back to the purpose that that tunnel was built for. That tunnel was built for those trucks, not to come in the city. Thank you.
attorney. Uh, we are pretty much at the mercy of the, of the Department of Community Affairs. Uh, after the decision that they are going to take uh, there, I am not aware of uh, how the director or the commissioner is going to act. Uh, if it is a decision that they will take, I guess, uh, sometime next week. So I have a question. What are the possible consequences of our lack of passing of the budget makers that DCA has? Um, being that DCA is the agency that uh, regulates uh, every municipality in the state of New Jersey, they have, um, they can come up with any, any avenues, any alternatives that they see uh, fit. Uh, so I want to ask, does that include a fine, or could it possibly include a fine or a deduction and transition or capital to the aid because this council is failing to, as a body, pass the budget and approve it? Uh, so I, I know that there is definitely a fine that is issued to every council person. Um, personal fine is not actually a fine that is given to the city. Um, I know that the fine, I believe, is $100 a day for every time that the council does not adopt a budget. I don't know if they are going to take that alternative, but it is a $100 fine per day, and it comes out of your personal, uh, comes out of your pockets, not the city. So, so in the city, are there any implications on the city for our failure to pass this budget outside of us being personally impacted? It, it's difficult to tell because, as I mentioned, DCA um, can use any any means to get the uh, to get the council's attention. I there's a possibility that yes, they they may uh, assess the city a penalty. Uh, or uh, you know they may just go ahead and uh, move the budget to the um, uh, local finance board. So I, 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 I don't you know I don't know what tool they're going to use. So, so I would really 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 implore uh, my colleagues to reconsider uh, their lack of moving. I mean, if possible, I'd like to make a motion uh, to reconsider uh, the resolution 19-171 so that we're not personally assessed to find, so that the city does not have to uh, pay for our lack of actions. We have an opportunity right now to avoid that and to do the responsible thing and pass these budget amendments so that you know, we can move on. The budget is almost three quarters finished, or more than three quarters finished, and so I hope that I can a second so that we can move on and uh, not um, have to deal with this. I know we're upset with PCA forcing us to have an 11 cent tax increase, but quite frankly, the Department of Community Affairs is the oversight agency of all municipalities, and I think it's irresponsible for us not to pass a budget that is what we are tasked with doing. We don't have a choice, and I don't want to have the people of Trenton suffer in terms of reductions of transitional aid, reductions of capital city aid, or additional fines. We've already been assessed more than a quarter billion dollars in fines. The city can't afford to have additional fines on top of the fines we already have. Two hundred thousand dollars here, two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars there. It all adds up to real money, and so I hope you all, someone, will find it in their heart to not make this a last game so that we can do the business of the city. So I'm making that motion to reconsider the unfinished business the resolution, and I hope I find a second. Is there a second to Mr. Blake's motion to reconsider resolution 19-171? Motion has failed. Next on the agenda is, or for the council consideration, is the consent agenda, which will consist of resolutions 19-26, 19-97, 19-98, and 19-99.
First on the list is Ms. Pearl Ward.
Ain't nothing like going to the bank, cashing a check with your name. They ain't nothing like it. But when the man sees the council people, that's unstable. Unstable like But yet, if they can't get it together, the city can. And I said before y'all before, if you do any argument, any discussion, if any disagreement or anything, can you please go behind those doors? Because people read to me. I got a lot of cop friends. I got a lot of prosecutors. I do a lot of work for a lot of important people. And they read the paper. They read the company. If y'all don't do nothing but take it down, please.
job that we want to bring to this thing. You know? And I know y'all can do it. I know you can do it. But you just got to put your hand together. And you got to work with these people that's willing to invest and get the job done. God bless you all. Go ahead and
Well, I found them in the front cover of this magazine. Bo Robinson and Reverend Woodson. And the known blacks in the city of Trenton was able to make the front cover. Now, this young lady on this front cover here is Ivy Anderson. Most of the people in Trenton know her. She was just starting up a career on Clinton Avenue. Now, she probably shared with me for the culture of Trenton movement that it was in college. Now, there's another article here, I was black. I gave this fashion show for this year. I did a cross thing with y'all now for me. That means that I was very active. And the only thing is what he said in Trenton. He was in college and they partnered with me to exhibit the culture of Trump. I have a lady, I have a letter here from the District of Columbus. I was in business for 18 years on North Brown Street. Matter of fact, I owned the most of the building, but I wouldn't talk about that. The reason why I said I would hire this young lady, Sister Patricia, she passed it on. She worked with me for 12 years, helped me build my business, and I was talking culture, and I hired young people to make my incense and all otherwise. My whole revolution and movement to teach culture in the state of training. Now, let's, let me fast forward. The historical society, I was in Washington, D.C. I was in Washington, D.C. when he took the man there and throw it away from him, and he had expression of counsel take over the city trip. Now, this is the council I'm talking to now. And uh, immediately, when they went in, they had a guideline from them to commit what they should do and what they should do if they want to get some money from this United States government. I, I know man very proud. I know man bad. So what they did, they changed. City council changed the rules in Trump. I'm thinking, what he said. They changed the rules. They changed the rules for the landlords and for the dope boys and the coke boys. They changed the rules. They said the landlord house, anybody sitting the dope in their property, the city would take it in their property. Okay, that was very strange. And other rules in place is only can be did through city council. Now, let me just fast forward. Committee, city needs to be set by, we spoke about this before. I agree with committee. A lot of people in Trent have no way to force their grievance. And that's true, including myself. But I don't worry about me, I take care of myself. Okay, now, the history, okay, the history of Trent should be expired. The sisters and brothers in the city of Trent schools are not being taught anything about the history of Trent. I came to Trump in 1956, and you had business all over the trip, and you had people coming north and south of the mountain running the business. Now, all of a sudden, Trump went totally down. Now, the only way the city continued to come back is the city council had to get together and come up with some strange rules that beat the guy out of the state capital and then put up additional money, what they did for housing and for the cleanup detail. They need to put a special committee or a special way crew. And, and then, now the same city, a uniform, a way crew. Why? I went to Georgetown for three years cleaning it up because they went out of black when I did because I was intelligent and efficient and I knew how to do the job. Now this is speaking from experience. And this is the other red hill from the tradition of Columbus. I put, she was the head of the lady and I went over 10 years. I went down there for 22 over here. And I came back to trip. They sent me on the brochure. They want me to come back to DC because they be a new home, new everything. So Mr. Black would be with me back and come back. But now my job right now is a trip. I have children, I have eight daughters, they're all professional. They move out of trip. They move across the place. You know why? He said nothing happened to the children or anything. Last but least, let me say this, I'm going to close up. I was a hermitage. I 
in the church to the young girl that's in the mix. They was out there selling goods in the streets. And, and I said, let me go over here. I parked my car and talked to him. And I showed him this picture. And I tried to explain to him about myself. They told me, they laughed, made a joke out of me. They said, that's your history. That had nothing to do with uh, me and us. Uh, I said, you didn't tell me. No, it's not my history. It's Trump's history. Trump's history. Trump's history. Trump's history. The cars are away from Trump. They don't have anything positive to talk about. They, and they're going to graduate one day. They want to, I know people in the room knew that they want to speak out of Trump. Trump is worthy of that. Now, uh, the, the historic society, they are now going to have homes, pipe, paint, and get a certain way. You just look in the city church and they watch them put this paint your house like they're doing. You got pigs coming here. The, the, the boot legs are the big paint and fix the house and come. You had to go to the historical society and they, 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 they go what child your house was going to be in that spring street. Uh, all of them in the historical street. I was down here two days ago. Up there, actually, in Kingdom on spring street. God is everywhere. You got children the next day, you got God's. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. And uh, so, all I'm saying is this. Three things you need to clean up the city church. And you need to get with the school education department. That is essential to that they have to have a program to honor students in the city of Trent about the history of training. You want people to come from the south to come everywhere in the way. Now only scratches is dead, but it's still it's history to be told. So with that note, I thank all for listening to me and I appreciate it.
to the repaving initiative that's going on here in the city. I'm also here about uh, the police director or the police director representative. I'm here about the way um, drunk drivers in our neighborhood are getting away with totaling our vehicles and just walking away. On January 6th, a drunk driver totaled my vehicle and that was my wife's vehicle. He gave the police a name. He had no driver's license, so he had no identification on him. And he gave him an address that doesn't exist in the city of Trenton, 1374. Chamber Street. 1374 Chamber Street doesn't exist. So I want to know how this gentleman with no ID and no address got out of jail. I've been doing an investigation to try to find him. The insurance company that he had is in Oklahoma. <coughs> when I informed them of this, they said, hey, not our problem, he paid us. He had been an active warrant after his arrest because he never came to court for the drunk driving, for the um, accidents, or anything. So he's out there doing it again. He's out there drinking and driving again. Maybe the next time he's going to kill somebody. So I'm asking the police department to do a better job of IDing drunk before they release them. If they're drive, drunk driving, fingerprint them, process them and photograph them and put their um, fingerprints on file and their pictures on file. So we have a record of findings. I'm going to find this man. As far as I know right now, he lives in Martinsville. During my investigation, I found out he lives in Martinsville. And I will find his address in Martinsville and I will find him and I will send authorities to get him. But where I live at, George, you know we have a lot of bars right here on the we got like four in a two-block radius. And on Friday and Saturday nights, it's all chaos. And now that the weather's working, they're going to start having their outdoor bands out there, so the crowd is really going to get worse. So I'm asking that the police department do a better um, job of processing these drunk drivers, identifying them without their license, when they arrest one with a license, do a better um, job of processing them. The gentleman's name that he gave which we don't know is true or not, it's Benjamin Carl Brown. We don't know who he is, but he had no idea. So how did he bail out? The well, police didn't know who he was. So um, that's an issue that I have. Another issue that I have is with the raises that the director's got. Where's our $28,000? I know these ain't all the directors. They took a $28,000 raise and said, forget it, I ain't coming. I got the money. Where are they? They got East Break. They got the school. I got to pay that $28,000 on my taxes. I ain't getting nothing for them. Where well, they at? Every one of them should be sitting here. How many of them gave that money back when they found out they got it wrong? How many of them gave the money back? Say, I don't know. How many of them gave the retro check back? How many of them gave the raise back saying that it was done wrong? But yet we say we want upstanding people in these positions. I've been clean of drugs and alcohol for more than 30 years come June 5th. But you know what a lot of people still remind me of? The 23-year-old drug dealer I was back in 1983. No matter what I do in this community, I'm still looked at by a lot of people as that drug dealer. So, if these people want to be these outstanding citizens and public servants do the right thing, get the money back. Because we still haven't told, been told where the money came from to give them the retro checks and where the money is coming from to continue to pay them the extra money. The public hasn't been told that yet. I want to know. I definitely want to know. Because when I did something wrong, the first thing they did was send the police out there. There's a double standard in this city. I don't care if you're mayor, the governor. If you do something wrong, you're supposed to be prosecuted. We're losing $250,000 while they're gaining 
$220,000. When is that fair to us as taxpayers? Explain that. I'm sick of it. They talked about the bickering that's going on between council and the city. It should be bickering. When the administration is doing illegal things and trying to call it clean, and the council is trying to clean it up. We done had 28 years of theft in this building. When is people going to wake up and see that it has to stop? You know how much money we have lost in this city? We got to stop letting the people that have elected the mayor and their staff rip us off and we stand there and smile and take pictures with them. I ain't doing it. I'm pissed. Because you can't be talking about change, but you're doing the same thing as the last I don't want to hear that we have a great mayor. Not when our money is getting misappropriated. Not when people come in here filling their pockets and not telling us where is that money coming from. No, I'm not on that bad way. Not until I get some truth and honesty from people. And Mr. McBride and the city city council, keep going with your doing. We need this. We need this. We need the people to be aware so that the people get angry and come in here. Because if they get angry and get pissed off enough, they're going to say, enough is enough. And as you notice, every time more and more people start coming here because they get pissed off at what's going on. And it ain't y'all. Everything that happens here is an action which causes a reaction. That's what they're not looking at. It's not something that y'all just say, well, today I'm just not going to do this. No, it's an action done by somebody that causes your reaction. And sometimes you got to stop and think and make the right decision no matter who don't win. I do it all the time. I don't care what people think about me. Ain't nobody paying my bills. Ain't nobody giving me nothing. Ain't nobody supporting my ministry. Ain't nobody supporting my, uh, like the things that I do in the community. So why would I care what people think? Until you come out here and see what's really happening. How many of y'all know out of that shooting Saturday that one of the young ladies was pregnant and she lost her child? We were at the hospital Saturday night because I knew the people. They sent us home, said everybody was going to be fine. Later on that night, I got a call. The young lady went to labor and lost her child. So I don't want to hear about glory and stuff when babies are getting killed on our street. And I'm talking about little babies. They don't went from grandma to mom, pop, son, daughter, child, to infants now. No problem, but it has to stop. Thank you.
Good evening, Council. How are you? Good evening. Um, first, I want to say, for the record, I want to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of you. It is the citizens. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Sonia Wilkins, and I reside on Bird Avenue in Trenton, New Jersey. I apologize. Uh, first, I want to take the time uh, to go on record thanking each and every one of you for your service, because you were voted in by the citizens of this city to do what it is that you do. I believe that an attack on any of you is an attack on all of us as citizens of this city. And I wanted to state that first before I go into what I wanted to say. Um, the issue that I have, and I've always been a really, really big advocate of cleanliness, the city is filthy. You know, it took my mother, who is 76 years old, to actually invite me, who live here in the city, born and raised and work for the city, to tell me that the city is in bad shape. And my question is, is there a comprehensive plan to clean the city? Is there a comprehensive plan to attack what's going on in the parks in terms of drugs and alcohol and smoking and trash and filth? Yeah, especially the parks that are in the neighborhoods, and most of them are, but I'm not just talking about Calcutta Park, because I know that that's a big part of the city and it's a staple for the city of Trenton. But I'm talking about all the parks. I'm talking about is there a comprehensive plan to clean up the baseball fields where our children play? There has to be something that needs to be done. But I'm asking, because I'm tired of calling, saying this tree needs to be cut, that tree needs to be cut, this needs to be cleaned, that needs to be cleaned. If I'm not mistaken, isn't there an ordinance on the residents of the city that we have to keep our glass cut and clean, keep our properties clean? And as a result, I'm doing that and paying taxes to do so. So my question is, again, is there a comprehensive plan to clean the city? We fight and we bicker about so much, but this life, I've learned that. But is there a plan? Is there a plan or is it just a one-time thing that you come out and do a big event to clean up the city all at one time in one day? Is there a plan? We fight about so much. We want to bring companies here. We want to bring businesses here. But who wants to come to filth? And I'm questioning, why would anybody want to do that, I don't know. I'm not them, I'm not here to judge anyone or anything. But what I've noticed also, where I live, there are a lot of needles, lots of needles. I live in the police ward. There are a lot of needles. I had uh, called my apartment to have them clean. They came, they got the needles, eradicated the situation, the needles are back. People are not cur cur curving their dogs. They don't poop the scoop their dogs, and it makes it that much more worse on top of the trash, the drugs, 
and everything else that we got going on. I think it's imperative that we start to educate our citizens in nothing else. We need to start empowering the people to teach them this is what needs to be done instead of complaining. Because I'm not here to complain. I'm here to offer services to see what it is that I can do. Because I'm tired of my grass being cut. And I have to look across the street and the city's grass is never cut. But is there an ordinance that states that my grass and my property has to be maintained in a certain way? I remember when I purchased my property nine years ago. And one of the inspectors drove by and I was, you know, when you first move in and you're doing, you're getting things done. And I had trash on the porch and I was going to put it on the side of the house when it was time for the trash to be picked up. And I almost got a fine. I was held accountable. It's time that we hold the city accountable. And the citizens to clean this city. It's important to me. Everyone has something that they have a passion for. My passion is to clean the city, get the city back to what it used to be. I was born and raised here. I just had a birthday. I turned 55 years old, and I've been here 55 years of my life, other than when I went away to college. And I remember the days, the glory days, they called them, when the city was clean, when people picked up behind themselves, when they picked up behind their children, when they taught their children to throw their trash in the trash receptacles. I remember not so long ago in the 90s when we did the same thing, when we start putting trash receptacles on corners in different neighborhoods that the city purchased. We had recycling bins and we had trash bins. What has happened? There's so much fighting about so many things. But again, a house divided cannot stand. And I'm not here to bring any more division, but I'm here to offer service. And to be perfectly honest, I don't even include my family. They're going to get me later. Because it's about two to three hundred of us in this city. Just in different words. But I will talk to my family and say it's something that we have to do. But I want to know what the city's plan is. And I'm going to say this last thing. I never forget when my son was growing up, my daughter was little. Both my children are grown now. And with young men, it was an issue with the gangs. Wanting to be in gangs, jumping them in gangs, saying, why don't you join the gang? That wasn't popular in my house. But I never forget my son said, well, mom, you know what the issue is? They're fighting over turf. I said, turf? What turf? What do you mean? And he said, mom, they're fighting over what corner you can stand on. I said, wait, 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 wait. No one even owns the corners that they're fighting over. No one. But the city owns that property. The sidewalks, the streets. So, I'll leave you with this. I just want to know if there is a plan to clean the city. I read in the paper, I see on social media, how fighting, this constant fighting, infighting, everyone's fighting one another. Nothing is going to be done if we keep fighting, and the city will remain the same. And guess what will happen? People will leave. People always ask me, why haven't you left? Because one, my family is there. Two, I was born and raised there. And three, you got to live somewhere. And I chose to live in the city church. Thank you. Thank you.
Now, I can assure you that my daughter is not a real intellect because she's raised on one of my caliber who have graduated with honors from Columbia University. I have an MA, an MSW, an LSW, and an LS LCAC, just to mention a few things. So I know for sure that she's not a real intellect. So when you're spewing different things about her intellect and the other intellects of the council, members of the fellow council members, you may feel high and mighty based off your degrees and your credentials. You can compare yours to mine. I will also tell you that they do not define you, and nor do they indicate that people who do not have them are of limited intellectual capacity. So I want you to keep that in mind when you guys are disagreeing with each other and show some sense of cohesion as you do the business in the city. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. My name is Clarissa Bell. I live at 154 Gerard Avenue in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, my concern, one of my concerns, is about the lead they're having in, in the water. 
and the money that they are offering to train to clear some of this lead. I want to know is the council of people reaching out to hold to the whole training because uh, about the money that they're giving to people to help fix this lead problem in their homes, the pipes, you know, because there gotta be a way for you guys to reach out to a lot of the homeowners because they don't know about it. You know, a lot of people don't. Everybody don't have the internet. You know, they don't have access to it. Some people are older. They're not good with the internet. So there have to be a way for you all to reach out to people and let them know about the money that they can receive to help face this problem. Also, I'm glad to see that you guys are getting along up here because and nobody is running out of the room or anything like that. That's great to see because the last time I came here, it made me want to come back again. Because, you know, everybody was arguing, people called each other names, which is not good. And, you know, and I'm just glad to see this today, and I hope I keep seeing this, because I really hate when they talk about the council of people of being trained. And uh, I think you guys are doing a great job. Uh, and one more thing else I want to talk about. I live on the garage, I'm in front of the school. Uh, I think we need some bombers in the road, because people are flying down that road, and you know, they're not thinking about the kids, the young kids. Also, Lawrence Township Police chased somebody on that street, almost ran into my house. You know, so there needs to be something done for the street, the safety of the kids. And um, I appreciate the job that you're doing, y'all keep it up. This is here to see, only locals and guests. I'm just surprised you guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council at this time? Oh, here we go. Please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Please keep your comments to us in the room. My name is Ellison McCall, the 277 Spring Street, born here in Kenya, Iowa, 1944. If people talk about this city, it's a shame when they talk about it. Well, the first thing I'll talk about today, well, the first thing I want to make sure you know is 246 Martin King Boulevard, Northport. There's a tree. The library fall down on the highway. The killer bus load of kids. Went to the public works office about it two weeks ago. I called the dirty transportation about it. And I don't know about this tree, but I told them, see it all there, fall down on the bus load of kids and kill them. We have reason to make this is so it's salvation on me and the rest of the mission to use for the place of living. Just gonna stand on that, that tree. Second one we want to talk about is nerve. Nerve. When you run off, you got to have some nerve. In order to be a good leader, you got to have some nerve. Your leader's weak, the city's gonna be weak. And that's what's happening. It's weak. Because you don't have a strong enough leadership. You argue about this. Nobody gonna tell me. Somebody will find here $125, but I didn't put the budget. And I know a million dollars going out there back to the city bench, because they won't force the city bench to you won't find me. No, we won't force the city bench to you If you got some nerve, we'll talk about finding somebody $125, you won't feed it. You won't even push the law that you got. You got the law. Who gonna give you some money? Nobody gonna give you no money. I'm going there. You do more for the township, the township gonna do for you. 
use equipment and everything else. Don't get you back nothing. It ain't gonna get you back nothing. And I don't blame you for not getting you back nothing. Because you let everything go out the door. Everything go out the door. I'm gonna give you something you got enough sense to close the back door. Keep nothing to yourself. And somebody gonna find me. Miss Vaughn asked about where the rest of the people employed here. Where do they live at? So she can find out about all this money leaving the city. What happened? Did anybody bring you any information on these high forces run to you? That is your job. You were elected for that. Do you have any kind of nerve in you? You're
December, that all of a sudden, the December was taken away from me, so I served only two months. And then after that, I had a meeting with the new director, uh, Carl Russell, uh, at the end of that month. Uh, I was told that I would be back on in March of 2019. So I was satisfied, even though I didn't get my third month of the happy year, you know, the new month. For the 2018, I was supposed to get three months, but I was given by the so I was getting in March, my continuing for another three months. All of a sudden, I received finally a letter from the director of police a couple of weeks ago, which, which is late because the application is processed, you know, it's supposed to be in by September from and it's supposed to have answered by September. The police department had to pay what months we have served. We never got anything in writing from them. Or verbally, I think the other company got up and you know, so much in between times in between. Point is not on the list. So that's the only thing I got an answer from. In the air from other companies that were younger who are serving the contract for 2019. Uh, still, again, I'm requesting to find out what is the reason in writing, not that I can apply for next year, what is the reason that my application was approved. So, I'm requesting you guys to please help me out in this issue. Did you need to acquire anything that you could? I'm sorry? This is the past present, speaking to you. I'm sorry? Did you need to take a picture? Yes. Thank you so much. I mean, it, it's been going on for a long time. Like I said, how can his father, I mean, he looks like an army. I mean, plus on the top of the third person who is on, on the train, he is also a tenant. I mean, they collect like a rent from the third person, which is Michael Thor. So they are, they got over here around the world. Thank you so much for taking my hand. Wait. 
forward building out our expected capabilities across housing, health, fire, road inspectors, particularly road inspectors, because right now we don't have any in the city of China. And since we are going to pay a lot of streets in the coming months, we want to make sure that, you know, as they say, do it right the first time, that that job is done in a quality fashion, and that they, and that job lasts quite a, quite a while, right? That you don't pay this season the next season because it wasn't done properly. Um, you know, it, it, it uh, deteriorates very quickly. But nonetheless, if you could tell us, you know, where we are, because the number of resources and tools that cover this function is very limited. I mean, I look at it and it's like a garbage inspector. My goodness. I mean, now I understand why certain businesses are delinquent and making sure that their properties are clean. Um, because if you don't have the inspectors to get out there and enforce the violations or encourage them to clean their properties, right? Um, but however, they have time to, you know, bug residents like Ms. Wilkins or even myself or et cetera. But nonetheless, you know, I don't want to be snarky comments about it, but more importantly, I just want you to share, you know, maybe today and periodically where we are in getting our inspectors out there and enforcing our ordinances. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, exactly, uh, we need to put a strategy together uh, as the Council uh, Councilwoman uh, Vaughn uh, mentioned. There's definitely a lot of need in the city for uh, enforcement. Uh, you know, you, get, you drive through the neighborhood and you can see how, you know, how the properties are being maintained by certain individuals and how others are just being left to the mercy of the wind, uh, to the mercy of nature, uh, you know, uh, it, it's definitely something that this this council and, and this administration will have to uh, really, uh, you know, will have to put our gloves on. Uh, we have to come up with a very, uh, it's, it, it, it's the, the intent of this council to begin an aggressive plan, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can do that. The, the plan on hiring new inspectors will depend on our, how we end up in the 20, fiscal year 2019 budget uh, so that we can start making projections for 2020. Uh, and uh, if the positions are vacant uh, for some of these uh, inspection uh, uh, jobs, we can, uh, with the uh, approval of the Department of Community Affairs, we can move forward and do some hiring, strategic hiring. Uh, so, uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, we do need uh, enforcement in the city. Definitely, you know, it should be uh, something that we need to start moving forward. I guess, um, as I mentioned to Colin in March, uh, just about a couple of days ago, uh, we were talking about court enforcement and, uh, you know, the, the need in the city. Uh, people don't like it when we go out there and we begin to enforce and they're going to start, you know, they're going to start coming to you, they're going to start coming to the administration, how dare you, why are you doing this to the city? Uh, don't forget, enforcement has implications. Uh, you, uh, you come to somebody, you give them a 48 hour, you know, uh, uh, cleaning is not done, you are now uh, uh, giving them a summons, a summons that may require them to be in court. Uh, next thing you know, uh, the summons doesn't get paid, and then generate another summons. Uh, next thing you know, we have a, uh, we now have to uh, start enforcing um, uh, liens on properties. And so, you know, it goes from there. So, um, you know, we, we, need to, uh, we need to have a discussion, a very serious discussion, uh, you know, to see, you know, the direction that the body and the administration uh, wishes to go. Um, you know, my conversation that we had in house is perhaps uh, begin a uh, advertisement campaign Local papers, social media, giving people heads up. On this month, we are going to begin enforcing, you know, quality of life concerns uh, in the city, and maybe we can move from there and decide, you know, whether you want to give somebody 40 hour notices or just begin to issue some notices. It is not a popular thing to do. Well, I, I, not a popular thing to do. No, I think if we, I think clearly, I think it's fair to say 
that most residents, and I'm one of them, that we should start. I mean, the city, as Ms. Wilkins stated, it's a mess, and, and you also stated it as well. So we have to start with zero tolerance, and we cannot, it's unacceptable. <coughs> zero tolerance, uh, really go hard and forth. Like send a message that we will no longer tolerate folks who just, just are just egregiously neglectful of their properties. And particularly with individuals who come here to do business and they don't have to live in the city and they need, and they walk out of their businesses and they lock up their doors and, and a pile of trash on the curb or on the sidewalk. No, go after them. Send the, uh, the sanitation department inspectors out there and hit them with a the ticket, put them in court. If they have to come in front of this council, I don't, we don't, really don't care. I, I think right now we have we don't have an appetite in the city of Trenton for folks who don't care about the cleanliness, the cleanliness of our neighborhoods. If I'm going to be held accountable for my property, and Ms. Wolf is going to be held accountable for her property, and everybody else will, will, will be held the same. And um, the only other thing that I want to follow up on very quickly is the issue that Ms. Mary Thorne brought up on Tuesday regarding the housing and economic development um, grant programs for residents. We take that seriously, and a, and a lot of issues that she articulated is around this list that a lot of the residents, particularly the seniors, they have been, residents have been on that list for quite some time for issues of, um, you know, of course, needing funding to remediate some of their um, issues in their home. And if they're qualified for the grant monies, um, we, we just want to make sure that their application or their interest in receiving assistance has been adequately and fairly assessed, right? That we're not, it's unacceptable for a resident to be on the list for three, four years, right? So, Mr. Cruz, if you could address that issue as well with um, Mr. I don't see him here today, Art or, or um, Mr. Did you Ben? Right? Yeah. Yep. Hector Director. So um, I want to make sure that that's top priority as well. I think it's important. We have a lot of issues in this city, but we can get some of the low hanging fruit done and addressed. And we can show the residents that we are working on getting some of those, we can get some of those things done, then I think that a lot of residents would appreciate that. I guess some of the bigger strategic things, um, I think they'll be a little bit more patient with us as we can move some of the smaller things. We actually have, uh, based off the, uh, the concern that the resident showed on, on Tuesday, uh, we actually have a meeting already scheduled for uh, this coming Monday with Arch and uh, Colin to begin addressing, uh, you know, what the program is about. Uh, I, I, the, the program is actually very generous here in the city of Trenton, where uh, there really is uh, a very high uh, ceiling for the amount of money that is given to the a king resident. Uh, there are other cities that have a limited amount, uh, a thousand, fifteen thousand, you know, so uh, that actually spreads the wealth other uh, people, um, you know, maybe it's something that we that we may want to consider. Um, if you want to uh, lower the amount uh, per participant, it is something that you know that we can also uh, look into. Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to probably address several things in your home. Uh, you know, but maybe you can do your windows, maybe you can do your roof, you know, but not necessarily the entire house. But I so, think it's important thing. I'm sure the list is long, and of course we have limited resources to get inspectors out there and get their property assessed, but I think it will go a long way if at least the administration would assess the list and at least give them an anticipated um, date where they, somebody is going to come to their home and review, right? And somehow, some way, you know, provide a, 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 a schedule of sorts. But to not respond or not communicate to them is just not. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a quick assessment, reassessment of the program and uh, come back uh, to the council with a report. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's all I have, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you for uh, Council Santiago. Good evening to everybody. I'm glad that it's 
to help people here. I have to thank uh, my colleague for approving the resolution line scene, Task 143, asking the Department of Transportation to work at around 29 pounds to cross us. We have been residents, I have been trying to work them for a long time. George for about 10 years we have been married. Finally, thanks to the police department, <coughs> the clubs have been given tickets and the traffic is selection. Our goal is to have zero, zero credit going to tax the candidate. Now they are going to land using number, using third, using uh, wherever they, they can. But uh, it is working. <coughs> Thank you to the Friends of the Policy Department. I, I have something to ask uh, Mr. Cruz. Two meetings ago, we uh, passed a motion uh, requesting that somebody from Wade Train, Wade Train, the one that has come from World War, come here to give us a little briefing on what it is that they are doing and what it is. What's going on? I have not seen anybody yet. So, uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, quickly tell me, I'm sorry. Are you done? No, I'm not. Okay. You want me to Okay. I just want to make sure. I, I apologize if I jumped. Uh, to they call me? Or they not come? Uh, no, so, normally, uh, the way things are done is, is that the, it, it's not the consultant that comes in front of you. It would have to be somebody from the administration, the director, the assistant director, uh, myself, can provide you a report because at the end of the day, they are providing the services that were set in place by the, uh, by the specifications on the request for proposals. So the services rendered are actually what the city requested. Uh, so... Okay, can you give us a report of that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I can have that in action. We can actually have, uh, perhaps, a dual presentation. If they can't have the policy of problem, from cost of the problem. Yeah. So we can, yeah, so what they have been doing since first book, since day one. We, we, not a problem. We can get that done. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll reach out to uh, Madam President and the clerk to set up a date for the department to come and, and uh, provide the presentation. Great. Great. Uh, we were talking about the budget early. We didn't go in the budget. We both in an amendment that came from this year, we spent about three months, three months or more on this and Wednesdays of the year, meeting here, uh, because we had a short form. According to the budget that Mr. Christian gave us, we had to raise the taxes 11 cents. That's 11 cents per on the dollars. My God, look like a lot for some people, but for others it is a lot. We, uh, a couple of years ago, we went through that evaluation and our taxes were raised up away from I'm a homeowner. I voted no to that resolution because we spent our time and we presented the DCA it came up from 11 cents, we lowered it to 5 cents. For this department was there, firefighters were there. We didn't want to have to cut services in the city. So we came up and lowered it from 11 to 5 cents. And that's what we presented to this year. They turned it back uh, this amendment saying that we have to go back to the 11 cents. Why? They have no explanation of why, but they wanted us to raise the taxes. If you agree that we should raise the taxes to please DCA, that would be, I will consider that. You feel it's fair for you to pay more money in taxes than what you're paying right now? Okay, well, I'll, I'll go for it. I am a homeowner, I'm against it. And I told it no to the resolution because that's unfair. Right now we are under this memorandum of our understanding. We have 
been for nine years now. Uh, they are struggling with us, the administration. We cannot hire, we cannot fire, we cannot do anything unless TCA approves. The state has to approve everything. Right now, some years ago, we used to get what they call Capital City A. It was $37.5 million. It's sort of in lieu for taxes because the state does not pay a penny in taxes to those properties they have in Turkey. So they were giving us $37.5 million. When they started this AWU, the Morandum of Understanding, they cut it off. Ah, and they came up with a different concept called transitional aid. Aid. The first from 37.5 came down to 25 million on transitional aid. After two years, it went down to 23 million. Then 21. Then now, this year they gave us 6 million dollars. That's all they gave. DCA, the same ones that want us to raise the taxes on our tax payers. I believe it's very unfair, it would have been very unfair for us to vote yes on this resolution. If we would have voted yes, automatically that was accepting that budget that they are imposing on us. Right now, they have the power. Tomorrow, they, can, they, can, they, they will approve if they want to. That's what Mr. Cruz tried to say, he didn't say it clearly, but they have the power to do it. Let them do it. If they want to raise the taxes, the state wants to raise the taxes, let the state raise the taxes, not distribute the taxes. There's another point that I'd like to uh, talk about, but reference to what Mr. Josue Colón mentioned before. Uh, they're building these towers, communication towers on the 1450 South Cross Street. Somehow, the city fast track this permits. The residents were not <laughs> aware, they were not notified. No one was notified in that, in that area, but they are building that tower. The process, according to one day, has to go through the planning board and the zoning board. Supposedly, the person from the planning Planning Division and the, and the person from the zoning division uh, signed up. There were no public hearings on that issue at all. That is something that uh, we have to stop doing those things in the city. We, we have to, if the, if, if, if the regulation says that we have to have hearings, we have to have those hearings. We have to notify our residents. So, that's something that I want to bring. I, I, I got some paperwork from Mr. Andrew, he just gave it to me today. I don't check it on it, but I believe that that project should stop, be stopped until we clear the situation out, until our residents understand what's going on with that antenna there. I know that is for the benefit of the police department and the fire department, and it's needed, but, but, I mentioned it last Tuesday, the same gentleman that is building that antenna there was awarded a contract for over $2.3 million, $2 million dollars, I believe it was, to repair the police station radio room. He never did anything, nothing to repair it. He didn't do it. Yeah. We are giving him about $850,000 for the service for the signal to come to the police station and the fire department. The signal is very weak. We have problems with that. Definitely we need problems in the tower. But we should not award the same person awarding with helping him fast track this permit for this tower. And that's that's a residential uh, it's a community here. This residents live there. You know, I believe that if he, you know, the month ago or so, uh, Mr. Morelli, the attorney, is not here today, 
when we asked about the radio room issue, uh, Mr. Morales told, told us that we couldn't discuss it because that case was most likely going to be going to court because the suggestion of failure to uh, complete the work that he was supposed to do. But now, rather than taking him to court so that he could reimburse us the two point whatever million dollars, it's been rewarded. <laughs> Built that thing right there at 1450 South Cross Street, right behind Mr. Colon's uh, house. And the city, it's okay with the city to violate the regulations by not having the uh, sending the case. I want that to go to, back to the planning to show me more. Otherwise, I thought probably we're going to have a little bit of protest in there. I, I, I didn't want one of these to please anybody. I know that there's some people that don't like the way I talk, the way I do things. But um, I ran because we have a need in this community. A lot of needs. We have about 10 residents talking about garbage, crime. Mr. Colbert there is always talking about the children being here. We have this happening all over the city. But so far, we are not doing much. We are not doing anything. Where is the plan? Lately, said, where is the plan? Since day one, we've been asking, what is the plan? What are we going to do? No answer to that. Plan is, I guess, Keeps things going the same way, business as usual. I don't believe in that. I believe that we have to change the city for the best. We have to confront the state. We have to go against that not memorandum of understanding. We have to get them out of our backs. As a matter of fact, I will propose that we start a city tax so that we could tax all these state employees that come to work, 22,000, they don't spend a penny in them. We should be taxing them, yes, because the state don't pay a penny. So we could tax their salaries. Everyone, everyone that does work in the city and does not live in the city because they are afraid of living in the city or they are ashamed of living in Trento, they should pay a little tax a little bit. The one percent or only five and zero percent. Thank you for listening. I would like to say to the public, it should be said that we're sitting here out of respect for each and every one of us. And so when the other council is speaking, it should be said in history on the styles. That is called respect. And at least when you come here to the people, you should have an ounce of respect for the people that share these values with you. And when you keep moving and will not give the, the body the same respect that you request, that is a problem. And so I just want this body to understand and know that all seven of us all seven of us should be seated to hear whatever, whatever the civic comments are that the body is making out of respect. It's, that's what it's called. It's called respect. We so are going to give the floor to um, our council um, for the South Board to close the shop. Thank you, Mr. Levy. Let's get back to the coming out. A few issues. Go back to the truck issue. Mr. Rodriguez jumped on board for K Street for the tunnel. I've been working on that for 10 years, numerous letters with the senators. It finally got through, hopefully, that this tunnel will be opened up and it'll take the pressure off of K Street because all of the residents there, their houses, are being destroyed. So, with his help and 
continuous pressure, and like I said, hopefully that will be resolved. Thank you, Mr. Roderick, for jumping on board. Uh, for recreations, Maria Richardson, I'd like to thank her for uh, helping out and uh, straightening up the park out on Riverside Avenue, along with Mr. Kirby, who's sitting out here to resident. Uh, he was tired of seeing that uh, not any work being done. We have a fishing tournament coming on the 6th of June. So what we had planned is to clean up the park. There was a lot of big trees that fell in to that area. We're in the process now of cleaning that park up. I am the South Ward. But when I'm asked to come out and help, I do go out anywhere, anywhere where they need me. And uh, I applaud Mr. Kearney, who's sitting in the back row out there. He's out there every day trying to make it better. Maria is uh, on board. We're going to uh, take it and we're going to light that park up so that people can walk that park up to the filtration area and ride your bike. At least you got the light in that park, which we haven't had in 50 years. We're going to light it up. The mayor's on board with it 110%. So, just to tell everyone here, uh, I would say by mid July, August, that park will be lit up and you're going to see a big change. All the other brush along the river is going to be gone. With all the dead trees that are laying out there, it's going to be. One hell of a difference. Everybody's going to be proud to go out there and walk that area, which we should be proud of. It's a city trying to work hard. For your taxes, council, the majority of the council work very hard, very hard on these taxes. You got it down to five cents. On a hundred. It's not good enough. DCA wants 11.4%. I pay $15,000 a year taxes. I fight for myself also, besides fighting with everybody here. I don't have, ever want to be called a politician because politicians are corrupt. I'm not corrupt. I work for the people. And I work hard. And this council works hard too. For you. For you. Even though some people don't think we work hard, we work very hard. Very hard. And the administration is fair, and we try to get along with the administration. We're going to have our problems. We do have our problems. But at the end, we try to resolve it to make it the best for the city of Trenton. The tower, which was put up on Broad Street, which Mr. Rodriguez brought to everyone's attention. I live a block away from the tower. I was never notified about the tower. I'm the councilman. I wasn't told anything about the tower. When I originally called up, nobody knew anything about the tower, about permits or anything. We have permit, permits now. We do have permits now. Uh, I have all the paperwork, sir, at my business. You are welcome to come to my business. I will give you a copy of all the paperwork so you're not left out in the cold. I felt that everybody who was in 100 feet of that tower should have been notified and had to say there if you want a tower or you don't want a tower. I understand that man spent a lot of money. He bought the Roma Bank, Investors Bank, to put everything there. That's something we did need the tower. We did need the tower because transmission for the police department was terrible. They couldn't receive the police officers working out in that work at all. So it was very dangerous. However, did we look at other sites?
Did we look at the 611 field, which is we own that field in Hamilton on Bunting Avenue? Now, I don't know if we could have put it there or we could have, you know, what the problem was. But when they, I see this big crane coming down my street, we're trying to figure out where it's going. Now I know, 175 feet higher, it's in my back door. So I'm not happy with that. And that's what we always say. Why are we not notified? We're canceled and we're not notified. But please tell me, sir, this is for you. You came into my business. I made the phone calls for you. You were supposed to receive a letter. You said you did not get a letter from anyone. I will go back and I will check that out why you did not receive a letter or instructions of what you're going to be working. I thought everything was taken care of until you came in tonight. I will follow that up with you. You have Captain Vaughn here. I will talk to him tonight or tomorrow to get the proper information and then contact you. And that's all I have right now. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and walking in. And everyone have a nice Easter. If I can ever help anyone, I'm here. No matter what board I work in, I respond. And one other thing, our council people, the majority of our council people, do come out and do clean up a lot of alleyways every day, day in and day out. However, however, it's like in, for in vain because we have cameras that are in a box for a year. Cameras will not catch anybody in a box. We have to put them up on a pole. So we're doing the same property over and over and over. That's got to clear up. I spoke to the mayor today. He assured me that was going to be done. And just to advise the West Ward, the councilwoman does know I'm in her ward cleaning up that ward also. So I always get the courtesy of going out there so there's no friction between any council people or anything like that. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Joseph Harrison. Um, first of all, I made a promise to the lower section um, that I would help get the Cook School cleaned up. Um, then I reached out to the mayor. We sent an engineer over to the Cook School. Um, we're going to get, you know, get the building reused. It's been there for 109 years. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to be there for another 109 years. I'm glad that my colleagues up here for voting for it. Um, like I say, it's, it's a building that's been here a long time. Been dis disrepair for a long time, and it's good to see that as a body we're going to move forward with on the Coast School. Um, secondly, um, like Ms. Wilkins said, volunteers were uh, wanted uh, this weekend. Chambersburg and Villa Park, uh, we're working at Columbus Park, we're working at Villa Park, we're doing cleaning, cleaning the parks, uh, you know, trash, church branches, we're planting flowers. So we're out there working, we're trying to get things cleaned up. Um, and then third, um, we talk about being fair, and I believe you should be fair to anybody. Any developer that comes in this city should be a fair shake. I believe we should, we should go in the executive session and be able to hear out anybody. I believe Provada LLC, myself, in my mind, did get a fair shake. We should have been able to at least listen to them. It was jobs that was coming to this city. At the end of the day, we talk about taxes, we should talk about education, but we should also be talking about jobs. We want to give people jobs. And to me, you know, when we talk about jobs, this was right here. We didn't even listen to what was being offered. And that's the one thing I don't understand. And then there was other things about people going to jail. I'm not sure who's going to, who's supposed to be going to jail regarding this, but if there's is anybody out there who knows who's going to jail, if you want to go to the prosecutor's office, I'll meet you there. Because I think it, at the end of the day, Barry Zanin, who came here as part of the night, he served veterans. And as a
body, we should be able to listen to everybody's concerns. If one of your concerns, and everybody who's willing to come in this city and it wants to be a part of moving this city forward, I believe they deserve our, our ear. At least we should be able to give you that respect. That's why I have to say thank you. Councilwoman Marcus. Good evening, everybody, and uh, Councilman Harris, I just want to make something perfectly clear, and I'm only going to say this one more time. <coughs> when the mayor bought the Prince Cal property to this council for sale, he had neither bid it out or put it up for auction or come to us to say, I want a developer in there. Those are the laws. So you need to do your homework and understand that. Um, and now I'm going to speak to uh, Mr. Cruz, if I may. The young lady came up and spoke about Kingsbury Towers tonight, Mr. Cruz. So I would appreciate you touching base with, with Yoshi and the mayor, because before you came here, we had a meeting. There was a lot of crisis at, at that end. A lot of neglect going on there and in those buildings. And we had a meeting with them and they were supposed to follow up with the administration. So now I'm hearing that there's more issues with the elevators and there's more issues with crime. So if you could please follow up with them and find out what's going on, I'd appreciate yes. that. Uh, uh, Madam Vice President, if I may, uh, when it comes to elevators and when there's fires, uh, normally the elevators are set to respond to the first floor for protection of the public. Uh, not being stuck in the elevators. So and there's a history with yeah. Kingsbury. I was on the board for years. So, so it's the so just it, you know just, just want to put it out there when the elevator when there's a fire or a fire alarm elevators are not supposed to be operational. Oh. If, if that was the incident, that the elevator is down for the reason, then yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I just need them to check and see. Uh, maybe the inspector just look and see if they can follow them through with what they said they were going to. Um, and, and, and the fire director knows all that. that um, New York Avenue, and I don't know who would address this, but that's where that, that restaurant nearby is, and that's the industrial area. Why is it that no one's allowed to park down there, especially in the evenings? Why is oh, everybody getting tickets? They've got signs, no parking. I don't, I don't know if the police department can answer that, but we need to, we need to look at that because that's having a, an impact on the businesses down there. And I know it is an industrial zone, and they may say no parking because they don't want trucks parking down there. Um, during the, I don't know, but certainly in the evening we should be um, so that they, 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 they buy businesses, the restaurants from those patrons because every time they come out, they get a ticket on their car. And there's nowhere else to park. That's against the fence, right? I'm actually violating Yeah, yeah. Um, I was on Martin Luther King Boulevard, um, 412 Martin Luther King Boulevard today, and um, I was with the New Jersey Transit and the lady who lives at 412. The bus stop was put there, and the bus stop's supposed to extend 150 feet, which goes past her step. She has a handicapped husband, has had an application in for a handicapped parking spot, and the council gets told that she can't get it because it's a bus stop. So we say, move the bus stop. Um, so the New Jersey Transit gentleman today said that he would move it around the corner, it's right there on Pennington, because you can have people sitting on her doorstep waiting for the bus, and she gets tickets if she parks in front of her house. She hardly has to get tickets, and you know, she has nowhere else to park. So, um, I spoke to New Jersey Transit, and I would like someone to follow up with Mr. Santoro to make sure that they change that location of that bus stop and, and, and address that lady's application for handicapped parking. Yeah, it's been four years, yeah. 412 Martin Luther King. And that's, it's 412 Martin Luther King, is where her house is. The bus stop is like 416, 412, so the, the, the bus stop. Anthony knows all about it, and nothing has been done. Matter of fact, New Jersey Transit came and took part of the sign down 
because they had expanded the bus stop all the way to the end of the street, which was way beyond what? And they accused the woman of taking the sign. Well, she really didn't particularly have time to go write down the sign, so. I'll take it. Um, there was a huge sewage surge leak today in the 1,000 block of um, Princeton Avenue. And I sent an email through because there was a business affected by that because when they opened up the street to um, stop the, the, the flow of sewage, all the dirt clogged everything up. And the business that was right there, the sewage started backing up into his business. And the city refused to take care of it. So I don't know what they took care of that. Uh, yeah. Um, Oh yeah, 364 South Broad Street. The landlord there has been putting out all kinds of garbage all day and night. Piles of garbage. Tried to pour in broad and put in short greenwood. Um, someone needs to get the site. It's right in the middle of the Um Um, I also just want to say to everybody, um, Mr. Rodriguez was very clear as to the process that we did in the budget. We did work for months trying to chisel down so that our taxpayers wouldn't have to bear the burden of responsibility of an increased budget. And we brought it down to from 11 cents to 5 cents. DCA, uh, this is our budget, council's budget. Once the mayor gives it to us, no longer can his budget. DCA met with the administration and they decided you're going, you're going to go back to what the administration originally requested of you. I know your conscience cannot support another 11 cent increase in taxes. And I think that, that hopefully, maybe not, that we did not put this forward, that they'll open up a dialogue between us and DCA and we can come to a middle ground on this. So, I apologize to anybody who's upset that, that the city, uh, the poor city has to do with that, this and do that, but I'm sorry, I'm tired of the taxpayers bearing the burden of everything that goes in this and this city. So thank you very much. <coughs>